Miss Melinda here, your spiritual advisor from MissMelinda.com, here to provide you with another video in our series on tarot and shadow work. In this series, I'm discussing the shadow side of tarot cards and specifically the guidance and messages that they may be giving you when you use the tarot for your personal shadow work. The first card that I have here is the Magician. With the Magician, the message that may be coming through is that you are lacking one of the elements needed in order to manifest your goals or desires or the reality that you're seeking in your life. The Magician utilizes all four elements. The Magician in your shadow work may be telling you that you are off balance you may have too much fire and need some water. You may have too much water and need some air. Assess what is out of balance in your life and how you could use the elements to reattune your balance. Where is it that perhaps you need to add more fat passion or perhaps you need to add more emotion as related to fire and water, for example? Another message that the magician may be telling you in shadow work is that you have the ability to manifest what you're seeking. You're just not using that ability. You're not utilizing the tools that are available to you. You're blocking yourself with the way that you are thinking about your situation or with the way that you believe about yourself. It could be an issue of a lack of self-confidence, a lack of self-assuredness, a belief that you do not have the capability to manifest what you are seeking. Lastly, a message that could be coming through with the magician is that you're being manipulative. You're trying too hard to control a situation or you're trying too hard to control your life or an aspect of your life that you're pushing your needs upon others or your wants or desires upon others you're trying too hard to manifest or pushing too hard to get what you want right so these are some interesting things to consider with the magician card in doing your personal shadow work the next card that i have here is the seven of cups the seven of cups is about Illusions, it's about disillusionment, it's about allowing ourselves to become clouded, allowing ourselves to become confused. When we apply this to shadow work, it can illustrate that we are living in a fantasy land partially, that we're either being too idealistic or that we're wishing the world could be a way that it's not, that we're not seeing ourselves clearly we're not seeing clearly what we are and are not able to give to the world what we are and are not capable of we're not seeing our own strengths and weaknesses clearly we're not assessing things realistically so when using the seven of cups in our shadow work the message would be to dig deeper and assess where you may be clouded in terms of seeing reality where is there a veil over the truth in what way are you refusing to see the truth about yourself or the truth about the world around you the next card that we have here is the hanged man the hanged man represents obstacles, represents blockages in some context, and the hangman says that you're stuck. When you apply the hanged man to shadow work, the message is that the reason you're stuck is because you are supposed to be seeing things from a new perspective. You're supposed to be using this time to look at other viewpoints. This could mean other viewpoints of people around you, that you literally need to see other people's perspectives, that you need to see other people's feelings. It can also mean that it's time for you to look at your life, yourself, and your world from a new perspective. And often the hanged man is telling us to look at things um, from the opposite perspective than what we are currently seeing to play a game with ourselves, to see things 
in the completely upside down way, right? Like the hangman is hanging upside down and the message is often that we need to flip things on its head. We need to turn things upside down and really take a look at the world in a way that is not necessarily natural to us. It's a game that we can play with ourselves in order to gain new insight, in order to gain new wisdom, new logic, new tools for problem solving, for overcoming challenges. The, so the hangman in shadow work may be telling us that we're being too obstinate, we're being too stubborn, we're refusing to see other perspectives. The hangman can be telling us that it's this kind of perception, it's our individual perception that we're holding onto too tightly that is causing us to be stuck and that we have to allow ourselves to see things differently if we want to become unstuck. That includes seeing other people's feelings, seeing other people's perspectives, other people's logic. It also includes seeing the world around us, the dynamics of the world, the dynamics of life, the, the dynamics of our culture, our society, seeing those things from a new perspective as well. This can allow us to become unstuck. The hangman can be pointing towards where we're stuck in our minds, where we're stuck in our world view. The Two of Swords tells us that we may be creating our own challenges by keeping ourselves blocked off from the world. There's a couple of different ways to view the Two of Swords in terms of shadow work. One way is about our defenses. So the Two of Swords may be giving us the message that we need to look deeper at our defense mechanisms. This could mean looking at why we've built our defense mechanisms. It could mean looking at how we have learned our defense mechanisms. It can mean looking at our, the, the mechanisms themselves. It could mean that we are putting up defense mechanisms in a way, in our lives, in our interactions, and in our relationships that we are not even aware of, that we are that some of our behaviors, some of our habits, some of the ways in which we carry ourselves and interact in relationships are actually due to defense mechanisms which we are not aware of. So this is one way that we can, one example of how we can go deeper into assessing our defense mechanisms in shadow work. The other big message that could be coming through is that we are creating our own blockages. You probably are seeing a pattern here by now. This, the tarot is going to be very good at showing us how we're creating our own blockages, especially in reference to the shadow side of the cards, especially when we are setting the intention to do this important shadow work. So the Two of Swords specifically can be saying to us that we are blocking ourselves off from the world, that because we want to keep ourselves safe, because we think we're keeping ourselves protected, we're actually keeping ourselves from receiving blessings or love or guidance or opportunities or happiness or joy. We're preventing ourselves not only from being hurt, but also from having deeper connections or having the kinds of experiences that we're really looking for in life. With the Two of Swords, it's another card that definitely the cards around it are going to give a lot of clues or a lot of further information about where those defense mechanisms may be coming up in our lives and how those defense mechanisms are coming up. We are going to look at the Justice card. Justice is telling us about balance. When we apply this concept of balance or what is just, what is right, what is righteous to our shadow work, we are going to be directed towards areas of our life that could be out of balance. We're also going to be directed to our own personal concept of justice. Um, ways in which we may be clinging to personal injustices um, 
perhaps, for example, we feel that the world owes us something because we have been through struggle, because we have endured injustice because we have been victimized or traumatized. Perhaps we're going around with a chip on our shoulder feeling as if the world or the universe should automatically right that wrong. And perhaps the justice card in shadow work is telling us the world is not going to right that wrong. We're the only ones who can right that wrong. And that chip on our shoulder isn't doing us any favors. In fact, the chip on our shoulder is what is preventing us from achieving the kind of balance or the equanimity or the justice and alignment that we're seeking in life. Another message that could be coming through with the justice card in relation to shadow work is that we are trying too hard to get some kind of um, retribution or we're holding on to a grudge. We want somebody else to be punished. We want... Um, what we perceive is fair to happen. We want to get retribution, we want to get repaid, we want to get our rewards, and the anger or the outrage or the stubborn quality of that idea is holding us back from other things in life, holding us back from experiencing the joy that is in front of us or experiencing the rewards that are available to us or perhaps even being able to appreciate the strengths that we have acquired through enduring what we've endured or from growing in the way that we grew out of these trials and tribulations. So there are a few different ways that the justice card can be pointing towards how injustice is in fact affecting us personally, how um, our energies may be out of balance, and how holding on to past emotions or past experiences may be creating blockages for us. The last card that we are going to address today is going to be the Hermit card. The Hermit card in shadow work is going to tell us that we need to be alone. Sometimes this can come up in relation to relationships. So, for example, we could be doing shadow work in regard to the challenges that we continually face in relationships and seeking some guidance in regard to those challenges. How can we overcome them? How can we get out of a, a particular pattern within romantic relationships or other types of relationships? And the hermit card may come up to tell us that we need to be alone, that we're supposed to be alone, that the only way that we're going to grow or flourish or learn is by spending some quality time with ourselves. Another route that we could take with the guidance from the Hermit card would be that we're avoiding ourselves, that the avoidance of ourselves points towards avoidance of pain or avoidance of difficult emotions or avoidance of a thought that we're having, avoidance of a change that we need, avoidance of a problem that we're coming up against, a challenge that we're coming up against. In other words, the Hermit card is asking us, why are you avoiding being alone? You need to sit with yourself. You need to assess what you're feeling. You need to assess what you're thinking. You need to come to terms with this and do something about it. Otherwise, it's going to be the cause of bigger blockages in your life. The Hermit card can also be telling us that the only way we're going to receive the guidance that we need in life is by sitting with ourselves. And that through this avoidance or through this constant seeking of relationships or through placing our problems or placing the blame of our challenges on relationships or on other people, we're really avoiding the relationship that we can have with ourselves. And while there may be difficulties within that relationship with ourselves, while there may be things there that we want to avoid or run away from, there is also going to be immense guidance and growth that we can only get through spending that quality time alone and really cultivating our relationship with ourselves. The only way we can do that is by taking a step back and observing our thoughts, observing our feelings, and really being honest about those conditions. 
Stay tuned for our next video in this series of Shadow Work with the Tarot. Don't forget to like, comment, and share, and subscribe. Thank you.